Hey everybody, Scoutcraft here again. It's Wednesday. What a great day. We've been having great weather. And uh, today we're going to make a quick one, but uh, I wanted to start off by showing you, because we went to Jacktown last week, and uh, I showed you with all the, su the subscriber gifts, the fantastic things they brought down, but I didn't show you what I bought. And uh, I was good. I didn't buy a lot, but I, I got some great stuff. Let's check it out. Real okay, quick. the first item I picked up was this uh, vintage Delta Redbird. I love my lanterns, right? This is, a you can see here, electric lantern. And... Um, you know, when you find one that doesn't have a cracked or broken lens, and, and this I paid, I think, $12 for it. Listen to the inside. <laughs> See? You know, there's some stuff going on inside there. You can't, I couldn't pop the top off when I was there. I didn't want to try mangling it. You know, I'll probably spray some 50-50 in there. And, you know, this is the original color, so, uh, and it's not rotted out on the bottom. So I'm telling you, this is a, uh, should be a nice project, fun project as far as lanterns. Then I picked up this, man, this is a nice lantern. It's like a commercial lantern. And, um... Obviously, it's not uh, made in the United States. Can you see what the uh, lettering says there? I don't even know where that's from or what that's from. Is that uh, German or Polish? I don't know what that is. But the uh, let me show you what's so interesting about this. Uh, it has all kinds of strange features. Nice switch. You push down and turn it. You can see here it's a, a heavy-duty switch. Nice handle. It's like a phenolic. It's not uh, plastic. And... It has a triangle, and that's how you can tell kind of a commercial light. It has a triangle little uh, catch to open it up. Now, if you get a six-point socket, this one here is a 732nd uh, six-point socket. If you have to search around to get the right one, but you'll get one that fits. You can see here it fits, and uh, you just open it up this way. And um, let's look at the inside. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. It's very fine-threaded, this, so it takes a couple seconds to open there we go it's open and uh let's take a look at this now you can see here it uses some strange battery yeah it's got two connectors here and i don't know if it was a single battery with that would you know this would clip over the top or two two smaller batteries i don't know maybe somebody's seen one of these before in europe and uh it's very clean inside like i said look at that plastic that's a that's a super high quality plastic flexible yet strong and uh, this will be nice. I would like to get this working. I, I just, I like my lantern. So that one, uh, this was five Then bucks. I picked up this nice Stanley Corn of Ice. And I paid a lot of money for this. Uh, this was $20. But this is as close to, uh, it, it's it's really beautiful condition. I mean, untouched. Just a tiny bit of rust. You know, you never find them. And this, this is the cast iron one. They did make aluminum ones that aren't quite as... Uh, as rigid so these are nice and you can see it's got the original this here was like a um a fiber board you know that they used to put in here uh on the inside and you can see here this one is in great shape everything is uh nice and what's nice about you know i use this all the time but what's nice about having two if you put one on each end of the bench you can uh really it uh you can really have a lot of versatility so pick this so this was like i said 20 bucks a lot of money but when you find these if you don't have one pick one of these up everybody has them loves next them. i got this cool socket set and you know how these work you know it's on the, they pull off the sockets fit on here there's a ball detent you could see here you put the sockets on so uh these were vintage years ago and this will clean up nice i've been getting a couple of requests to do a uh a socket set again um then i got this nice rigid you know these they're like a spud wrench you could see here uh this one here is a two and five eighths uh, capacity but uh great shape right a little bit of a little bit of an overbite right <laughs> like we say on these but um they're so nice and this one here for three dollars how could you pass this by in great shape picked up a couple screwdrivers uh, this one here was in the dollar bin and look at that nice heavy duty shaft. But again, somebody tr was, you know, trying to get this to fit a regular screw or whatever. And you can see they did a grind job on it. That's, uh, but it's so long up here that it, even if you took that off and redid it, it wouldn't look out of place or shortened, uh, wood handle on here. But the, at the back, even though it's a full through tang, 
It's, yeah, I prefer a cap on the back. So we'll see what we can do with this. This should be a little fun project. And then I bought this, and I know, I believe me, you know how I feel about these, but this is a perfect handle type screwdriver. I believe this is a, one of the foreign imports, but I was looking at, the, and I, like I said, I didn't pay 10. I think I paid like $8. Uh, I got it from Bob. He, he always knocks off a few dollars, but I was looking at this and I was saying, wow, this thing has some tremendous fit and finish on here. Look at the, you always look at how the scales, you know, that's how you can tell some of the cheap ones. There's gaps and everything. This thing is uh, just a beautiful fit and finish along the seams. The uh, steel looks really nice, heavy. The grind is beautiful on here. Um, look at that. It's just a, a nice grind all the way up and and the back here. And it, you could see if it looks like there's kind of a coating on there, that's because they dip these in varnish is uh, is what they used to dip them in. To, and varnish tends to yellow a little bit. But you can see here it's, it's well done. If that varnish was off there, it's I liked it. So that's a nice, and it's got a thin profile, so it really feels comfortable in the hand. This is a extraordinary screwdriver. Next up, I bought, uh, now I didn't pay 15, probably paid about 12. Again, you know, I buy from Bob, and you know, when you go up there with a bunch of, you, you grab three or four tools, you go up there, and he rounds it off, so, um, look at this, this is a, a Billings and Spencer, it's a Model E, you could see here, and, uh, this has to be one of the nicest condition wrenches i ever bought you know i usually buy these all trashed up now this is a painted model but you can see here that there's no nobody banged on it uh the jaws are pristine it works beautiful although it just needs a little cleanup and again you know there's a little bit of surface rust starting but it's it was painted so this would be a prime candidate for a restoration or to uh, clean it up and leave it as is real nice uh, tool um i bought a a lock. Let okay, me show you. This, this is uh, called a. Uh, it's an antique iron warded because it uses a series of wards or gates in there that this key goes in. It has to pass through padlock. And these were amongst the earliest ones. These were in the 1800s, but they went up to the 1940s actually because they're very heavy duty. They're forged. I mean, it's a tremendously you know. And you can see what I paid for it, right? Uh, but they do go for a lot of money, especially. If they have the key because you see how hard these keys are to duplicate uh you could custom make one with a dremel i guess but uh you know they're not easy to duplicate now this one here the key goes in it it turns a little bit i do believe this will work but i don't want to you know force the key what we're going to do is we're going to uh put this in some evapor rust and uh let that sit for a couple days and then see what happens and uh because we want to get all that in there, and then we'll lubricate it, and I, I believe we'll uh, get this to work. But I'll hit it quick with the wire brush before I put it in the vapor rust, give it a head start, and let me show you what that looks like. And that was a quick cleanup, huh? Look how nice this came out. You know, that's just with the wire brush. Again, we're going to put it in the vapor rust, but you can see here the in inners of the lock were brass, of course, so they wouldn't rust out and whatnot. But there's always some parts in there that the wards that are steel and that's why the lock probably isn't working now i'm sure that if i drench this with some 50 50 i can get it to work but i don't want to contaminate the evapor rust let it get in there do its work then i'll lubricate it and get it to work later you can see here the maker is jhw climax company they were out of newark new jersey it is uh again the early 1900s uh this lock they were called scandinavian locks they're on i mean they are solid so so we'll put this in the evaporust and uh, Friday we'll revisit this and see how this looks. But it's very interesting because the the two um, lock, the, the shackle body goes into here, both sides. And you, I think you'll find it interesting. Next up, I bought a little safety latch. These are always good to have. These you can use actually when you're on a ladder. And uh, what, the, what the hell they work is you tie off a lanyard from here to maybe your safety harness on your body to open it. And you can see here who makes it... Um, this is a pen safe, you could see. And what you do is there's a little release here. So you grab it like this and then you open the gate. You see, when you push this like this, it allows the gate to open up. And when it goes on here, a lot of these guys use this on ladder rungs. When they're climbing a ladder, they'll place this on here and then onto the ladder, climb a couple steps and redo it again, just in case. This way, if you fall, you take the ladder with you. 
Um, a very interesting, and, and for $4, you can't beat these. Okay, last up, this is actually my most expensive purchase of the day. I picked this up from Bob. I paid somewhere around $22. Like I said, I lumped in the, uh, uh, the this is a B Boardman uh, uh, hammer wrench from July 1866. Yes, siree, this is not a cheap wrench, and uh, this is kind of a collectible wrench. Now, normally, I, I do not mess with rare wrenches here. You know, I like to take cheap tools and make them nice. I don't like to, you know, that. But this is not a very, believe it or not, as expensive as these things go for. They're not very rare. There was a bunch made and a, and a lot of people. So uh, I could, I believe I can do this and do it justice and make it nice the way I would like to have it in my collection. And uh, without annoying too many of the collectors, because like I said, there's plenty out there. If you want to have a nice, a, a tool that has a lot of dings and dents and patina on it, then there's plenty out there for you. But that's not, I, I like my tools to look like they came from the factory. Let's take this and see what we can do with it. Now, something I didn't even know about this wrench when taking it apart. You see here, we just took this apart here and uh, I notice something very interesting um this little section that goes in the top had a little screwdriver blade put into the bottom how cool is that this is really a cool little wrench isn't it combo wrench little screwdriver put into the bottom and uh you can see here it was like a nail puller it had a couple different features on it you know your little hammer here and uh you can see the dings and the i don't know how if people were banging on the side or why they would do that but a little flared over here. We got a few things to take care of, but uh, interesting, right? Little screwdriver tip hidden. You would never know about it if, unless you took it apart. Okay, here we are at a post wire brush evaluation. Now, again, this is a 150 year old tool. We cannot get this to be NOS looking, but we can get rid of a lot of the imperfections, hopefully up here, but there's always going to be something remaining because we have to keep all the lettering. We have no choice on this one. And also, we have to keep the tolerances. You can't start grinding or, or uh, uh, alter, altering this uh, bar here because if you do, you'll have kind of slop, and, you know, and you don't, inclusive slop, you don't want that in there. But the rest of it, we can get rid of the cosmetic imperfections, hopefully. Remember what that face looks like there, you know, it's a, it's a little dinged, but and the top here, you know, we could do stuff like that. And you know, there's two chips taken out of here. I banged this back. Do you remember it was flared out? I banged that all back. So um, it's looking good. Let's let's uh, let's finish this up. Now you know my favorite part. You remember what this wrench looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. And this project was one of those uh, projects that, I, like I said, when you're dealing with collectible tools, you're always walking that line, right? But I did this and what I thought the tool would have looked like brand new. This is how they would have, you know, it had a nice shine to it. It wasn't po mirror polished, but uh, you could see here we have a nice... Nice clean show. We kept all the lettering. In fact, enhanced the lettering. You could see now uh, how nice the lettering looks. And you could see also here. It's again, you could see the 66 now. Everything is nice and cleaned up because we enhanced it. Uh, took all those dents and, and creases out of the handle. Uh, it works just like a dream. Look at this. I mean, polished all the threads. Um, and... You know, everything has been lubricated, everything, the, the hammer face looks good, the claw face, the top looks nice, and uh, the wrench, of course, we banged that all back in. Again, no way you could replace that, uh, those chips that are gone, but, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the, the wrench, the age of the wrench, but you could see here, all of it looks nice, right? It's, uh, it's, and I'll tell you something, anybody that felt any of my tools, you, it just has such a buttery, not a sharp edge, not a... 
something like it's been in somebody's pocket for 150 years. And so, uh, what do you think? You like this type of wrench? So there we have it. A nice little midweek video to get you through the week. And uh, that came out really nice for a, a vintage 150 plus year old tool. Um, I, I really enjoyed doing this one today. Hope you did too. Take care now. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>